as you can see, my backdrops now become a t-shirt stand. Now I've got a bit of Minecraft on here, and this one's from the, the, the Germans for the World Cup. Obviously, this was on sale, so I thought I'd get it, because <laughs> obviously they're out. Um, but the, the point being is, see, I want to talk about media manipulation, and this is why when people go, Matt, how can you talk about MGTOW when you're not actually MGTOW because you're married? Because uh, it's much bigger than just uh, singular in the sense of affecting myself. It affects my son's future. It affects other people out there. The information shared about like traveling and getting more information is important for people to broaden their perspective and understanding in the real world. But today I'm going to talk on something that has bugged me, uh, to be honest. It has bugged me for a couple of days, which is why I'm bringing it up. Um, it was to do, to do with an advert for Adelaide University, and all it was was a guy sat there like this with five women around him, and it's got into Twitter and all this social media, then ended up in the BBC. Bear in mind, Adelaide is in Australia, for those that don't know, um, and the point being is, it was like, oh, it's mansplaining, it's, ma it's, ma it's a man explaining things to five women, it's all wrong, blah, 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 and this is all part of the Me Too, and all this feminism, it's stupid. Because if you said, Matt, what do you see there? And I knew somebody had a political agenda, because you can see them bogeys bubbling at the nose or whatever with their frustration. I would say, oh yeah, that's, um, yeah, you got, that's a five to one ratio in that class. Is that mathematics? Is it five times as many women doing mathematics as there is men? No, no, that's not what you can see, is it? No, you've got a man explaining to five women. Yeah, but I actually see that as a classroom, he's not a lecturer or a teacher. He's sat in the class, and I assume they're all sitting there. Why is he the only one that's ready for class? Why are they all standing around talking to him? Why are they putting him off his classwork? What, what, I don't understand what you're talking about. There's obviously a five to one ratio here in this classroom. Does that mean that women are more intelligent in this class? Because it's exactly the same. But just playing it to their, their viewpoint in the sense of you saying, well, women must be more intelligent in this class, whatever it is. Because there is no class. It's a bloody photograph. It hasn't even been approved by the media group for the university. I don't know how they got hold of it. But the whole point is, this is where the media manipulation is going on. Because it's not even been approved by the university. Yet, at the same time, it's gone through Twitter and social media and become a news story in the United Kingdom. For a university, it's not even in the country. And I just... It just stinks, manipulation. And I've seen stuff and read up on the Me Too thing where Me Too goes, even if it's not against the, the law, they will use um, media against it. So the point being is, regardless of if the person hasn't committed any crime or anything whatsoever, as long as the Me Too crowd get what they want, um, everything else doesn't matter. Right. Now, the reason this also becomes relevant is why I'm cancelling my Netflix subscription. There's three comedian, comedians on there, and the, the main reason for me getting with this is very simply, they're political, and they're not funny. I do not pay a Netflix subscription for people to have a political agenda. I pay a Netflix subscription to be entertained. Um, the Australian comedian that decided that she has an issue about her comedy she's done as her entire career um, is a prime example. She, she is a lesbian. She's got an issue about the jokes she made about lesbians and what if a lesbian was sat in the crowd and all this. I'm like, give all your money back for your entire career. If it's bothering you that much, give all your money back. But I also want to stress, I've never made a career uh, a lesbian joke in my life. So at what point would she assumed that I have something to bear on this because one of the things I do want to stress is I don't care if somebody's gay or whatever um, because it has no bearing on my life. It's, they're trying to make it have a bearing on my life, but I'll be honest with you, I do not care. You know, what people do in their own rooms and stuff. What about the kissing on the street? I don't like any of it. Doesn't matter if it's a man and woman. I find it irritating here in Spain when men and women do it. I don't like it in, in public. That's my personal preference. I don't think that people need to see it. We've had people engaging in sexual activities down in the uh, Torreveja town where the police have had to come and try and separate them. And they didn't stop. They were like dogs on heat. Um, but that was a man and a woman. And at the same time, was it acceptable? 
No, that's what I got in the newspapers. But anyway, the point being is she's got a, a problem with whatever her career path and mocking lesbians and stuff because she's a lesbian. And what if she was sat in the crowd and there might be somebody sat in the crowd that was doing this and her jokes were this and she's got to sit there and take it all in and pretend it's all funny and stuff. Don't do it. Why have I got to pay a Netflix subscription for you to have therapy at my cost? Um, it's not anybody else. You've done it yourself. Most of the comedians, as in men, because uh, I don't generally watch that many female comedians, um, I will be honest, there is some out the UK, um, but that's because I don't really... American humour is not my humour, and the same with German humour. The Benny Hill stuff... Uh, was funny in the 80s and whatever, but for me, it's it's had its day. Um, but at the same time, you got, uh, I can't remember her name, something Wong. She, I'm not sure if she's Korean, I think she's Korean. But she's got to, like, complain about men. You know, it's got to be thrown in, there, like, every third sentence, whatever. On top of that, <sighs> screeching voice. It just see the the thing is it just remind, reminds me of Hank Hill's neighbor the the Korean guy with the car they just go you know whatever Hank you know yelling I'm trying not to because he swears at Hank quite a lot she just reminds me of him because she's doing exactly the stereotypical stuff and yeah she's all about Filipino nurse this and all this but the thing is even though I start doing my her voice people go oh you're stereotyping her no she's doing her stereotype she is that woman um but even with that it's just screechy and she's complaining about her own husband like oh my my husband changed the diaper and everyone's like oh you changed the diaper I do it all day long and blah 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 well you're a mother you know it's what are you expecting <laughs> what were you expecting um but this is sort of stuff you're just like what you're expecting your husband to take hold of the child and breastfeed the child for you and everything else i don't understand what your problem is don't have children if you've got a problem with having children um and I, that's another one and the third one was that one that had an issue with trump at the the media thing in washington she didn't make one joke during that speech but she got a lot of media coverage which okay she's in the middle of the right room but at the same time it just wasn't funny and that's why you know I've heard a few people say um, about comedians it's like it's just not funny and I think that's the problem with some of this stuff and like I said I don't mind them going off and having their own comedy club and stuff I just don't want to pay for it in my Netflix but it's political agenda and this is where it's all going wrong because you'll find um, most of the guy stuff is just general life it's just going through the motions but a lot of this stuff is very focused on specific points you know like you got the Australian one complaining about the interpretation of lesbians in the media and you know how they become a joke yet like I said I don't know any lesbian jokes I can't even comment on that um, the I think her name's Wong I might be actually completely wrong she's got glasses she looks very stereotypical I'm sure she's done it on purpose um, wears glittery clothes and stuff but hers is often derogatory to her husband and and like even when she was in hospital she mentioned the Filipino nurse blah 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 yet she'll then mention like when she was talking about her, how do your parents feel about that you know she was on about something oh so you think my parents wouldn't like my education because um, because I'm Asian blah 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 yet she was stereotyping some person it a Filipino nurse but she then had an issue with somebody doing exactly what she did um, because somebody was asking her about her I think it was ah to be a comedian that was it with her jokes and it's like oh you're stereo you know because I'm Asian or whatever because my family will be like culturally this blah 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 well maybe they just asked you a question <laughs> maybe that was it maybe you're the one with the problem um, and then like I said the, the other one I just don't get her jokes. I've seen her material elsewhere as well. She's a ginger-haired woman, and she does get it on the UK stuff sometimes, at the Apollo and things. And I do find they seem angry too much. They seem to have an agenda beyond what they're actually there for. 
So when people ask me, Matt, why can you be MGTOW when you're married? It's because this stuff will affect my son in the long term. This will affect other people in the long term. Um, because giving an inch gives a mile. MGTOW is not just about men going their own way in the sense of living on their own. It's also removing themselves from a lot of this media stuff. And like I said myself, I'm removing Netflix. Netflix has become way too political for, my, uh, for, for me to watch. I hate it now. Um, not just the comedian stuff, but there's a lot of other stuff that goes on there. Um, if you ever watch Sense8, the way they've injected so many different stereotypes into <laughs> into one TV show is pretty good. Um, but the, the point being is, I can't be bothered with political agenda. I just can't. It's, it's of zero interest to me. On the, it's it's not as if somebody's life is in danger it's not as if something is actually being positively done out of this it is often people got a chip on the shoulder about something and it's often driven by people that aren't old enough to have developed a chip on their shoulder because it's often student driven as well um but anyway that's why i wanted to cover this today and, I, and one of the things i want to say is it's worth cutting yourself off from this type of media in my personal opinion because it's supposed to bait you it's supposed to drag you in it's supposed to get you talking about it because then people start uh, going is this right or wrong well in all honesty i look at this stuff the majority of it is just not worth listening to thanks for watching